hello I just wanted to explain a few things I'm getting a lot of questions about um, how I keep these alive and one of the most important things for these plants is sunlight they need lots and lots of it six plus hours they originated in North Carolina it's really really hot there um, but they're in the marshy areas, so it's really, really wet. So humidity is a big deal. Um, my setup is full of sphagnum moss, peat moss, perlite. This is the one that was mailed to me. People say that theirs just kept dying and turning black. But mine is standing up and starting to open up his little, his little guys to eat. So they need energy. They don't have any nutrition in their soil. They don't have any nutrition in the water. It has to be distilled water. You can't use well water, bottled water, or tap water. You can only use reverse osmosis or distilled water in the jug. And I have a reverse osmosis, so it really helps a lot. You wanna keep them in standing water. If the water is about a half inch thick to an inch thick down there, it's constantly going to soak up and keep this wet. As you can see, this is drenched. So it kind of gives them a little bit of a humidity, the ecosystem that they're used to. Um, because it's super dry here, so it's hard to, to keep it moist. But they only have one root. It's not like their roots like take up the whole dish. The root just goes straight down to the bottom and they uh, drink water that way. Um, if you look it up or look at animation or anything like that, when the seed sprouts, it's just one root and it goes straight down to the bottom. So that's why you're able to feed them water through the bottom like this. And they get plenty of it because... Uh, like I said, the root goes all the way down. Um, a lot of people, when they get these plants, they keep them in the shade or put them in their windowsill. They need some real, real sunlight on them to get energy. So like I was explaining a minute ago, they need energy to open their traps. And they get that from the sun. And then they get their nutrition from the bugs that they eat. Now, when a trap is triggered, by like a finger or a fly or a bug. They have two sets of traps. When a trap is triggered, they will close. Now they will not seal shut unless the second trap is triggered. See how there's a bug in there and he's sealed shut? I'm trying to get a good focus here. Let me switch around the sun, it makes it hard. Okay, so see how this guy is sealed shut. You can't even see inside. That's because once the first trap is triggered, if the bug is able to get out, then that means it wasn't meant for this for this guy. And um, within a half hour to an hour, maybe the day, sometimes it takes the day, it'll open back up and you're able to see inside. Let me try to find one. That was triggered that you can see inside. Like, see how you can see inside this little middle green one right here? He's not, he is not sealed shut. So he did not eat. This guy is digesting. See how this is sealed shut? You can pretty much um, see the bug inside there if you have it in the right spot. But anyways, so yeah, they, it takes a lot of energy for them to to shut their trap and if they have no food in there it definitely definitely takes a lot for them to open back up and yeah it, it can kill their leaves because they're wasting so much energy now overfeeding as well hand feeding can cause their leaves to die as well because they're overexerting and uh, there's too much nutrients with all the bugs. They know how much food they need, so when they're hungry, they will eat, and they'll catch their bugs on their own. Um, if you do enjoy feeding these guys, 
uh, because it is fun to watch. But if you just sit out here long enough and keep an eye, a fly will land on them and, and, and you'll be able to see them eat. But if you have to or the kids want to see, I suggest maybe once a month a fly it has to be living you can't feed them dead because the dead isn't going to trigger that second trap to seal shut to release the toxins that it does to digest the bug um, so you can't give them a dead bug you have to give them something that'll be wiggling in there and it, and it sets the second trap and seals them up shut like that see now this guy hasn't eaten since he's been here, but he's definitely, definitely perked up and opening up some of his, his traps. So I'm sure he'll be eating soon. And I also wanted to explain how I, how I did this, how I acclimated him. So when they came home with me, I realize, you know, this one was in a box for two weeks in the dark, had never been in the bright sun, it was probably in a greenhouse in California, and this one probably hasn't seen much sun because there's no red in him, and usually if they're raised without bright sun, they stay kind of green, and this guy must have had lots of sun because he's got so much red. Um, so when I brought this guy home, or when I received him in the mail, I didn't want to just go throw him out in the sun. That would be terrible, right? Imagine if you were sleeping in a box for two weeks, all dark, and then all of a sudden someone takes you out, throws you in a bowl, and sticks you out in the sun. You're not going to be able to see, it's going to hurt, it's going to be painful, right? So you got to get them acclimated to wherever they're going to live. I would not suggest a window. It's not enough light and there's not enough bugs inside. Um, I suggest that you put them in the potting mixture. I put mine in bigger pots so that I can leave them in there for a few years. So they're in a bigger pot than what they came with because they send you the stuff. Like little pots and little moss to put them in. Um, so yeah, what I did was I repotted them. I set them on my kitchen table for the first day so they could see that it was light out. Then the second day, I set them out on my patio. I'll show you. Right on here. And I set them right between these guys. And I had that shade up. So he, they got some bright light, but not direct sunlight. So they sat out here for a day. Never brought them back inside. You cannot bring your plants in and out, in and out, in and out. If you do that, you're gonna confuse them. They'll never acclimate. AC, heat, it'll never work. You have to pick, and I do not suggest indoors. So the third day, I put them over here in the morning, just for the early morning sun, for two hours. That's it. Well, these guys can handle full-on sun but this baby two hours and then the next day three hours and four hours and so now I just put them on the shelf in the evening for bedtime so that when they wake up they get the first early morning sun and then at lunchtime I'll go ahead when it's super super hot and I'll bring these guys back over here to sit for the afternoon, which we like to sit and watch them anyway, because this is where it cools off and all the flies come around and we sit and we are hopeful that they eat, but they don't eat every time because sometimes they're not hungry. So that's the problem. When people force feed them, they're going to get sick and die. They know when they, when they need to eat. So it's best to just let them do their thing and I can sit and watch them for hours, hours and hours and hours. So there you go, that's how I acclimate mine. They're doing pretty well, they look happy. Um, I haven't seen any black leaves. The only reason this one is, is because when it came, it already had that leaf, the black one. 
which I expected. Um, when they come in the mail, they're asleep, they're dormant. The root is still very much alive, but the leaves turn black because they didn't get any sunlight. Also, because in the packaging, their traps have been touched and activated, so they're all sealed shut. So he's probably very stressed when they get here and um, taking them out of the baggie that they're in in the box and planting them. You have to be careful not to touch the traps. Activating those traps will really exhaust them and their leaves turn black and fall off. But even if their leaves fall off, it's okay. The root is still alive. These plants are very resilient. If you know what you're doing, they will grow back and it'll be fine. Um, but uh, also another tip, they have to sleep. They have to go to sleep during the winter for about at least five months. In these hot areas, some people put them in their fridge or their freezer. Um, what you do is they'll go dormant. So all their leaves will die, probably fall off. Some people cut them off and just save the bulb. And um, it has to get really cold so they go to sleep. They will not have enough energy to survive through the whole entire year. Uh, they will definitely die. So these are some delicate little beebs. And they're going to go to bed for winter time with us. And I'll have to figure that out, but I'm sure I'll do a video on it. But anyways, I just wanted to show you my guys this morning. It's bright and early, getting them some sun. And in their water, the water's full. I fill it a couple times a day to cool them off. But not with cold water, just the osmosis water. And yeah, they look beautiful. I'm in love. And I want more and more and more. I think I'm going to go ahead and order some more difficult ones to care for. And I might get started on a whole new thing with car carnivorous plants because this is fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or anything, just go ahead and private message me or ask. I'll be happy to help if I can. Um, and yeah, guys, happy gardening.